Alright, hi there, welcome back, and I'm going to be doing an interesting video today where I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 tips for growing tomatoes. So, I'm not going to lie, I can't remember all of the tips. I've tried to get them all um, onto two A4 sides, but there's going to be loads of different things. Uh, there's going to be the usual about light and uh, like feeding them, but there's also going to be some interesting companion plants and other tips like this. So. Let's just go in and uh, speak about this, so uh, bear with me, uh, but these tips are definitely worth for growing uh, top quality tomatoes. Okay, so the first tip I'm going to tell you is once your tomato plant is about three foot tall, you always want to try and get rid of the first set, at least the first set of leaves, because these are the oldest leaves and they're more prone to disease and these are getting blight. So. As soon as your tomato plant reaches that size, three feet, you want to remove this and stick this, um, I wouldn't stick this on the compost pile because there's blight, uh, but if you do it a bit earlier, do stick it on the compost, but if it does have blight, what I would definitely do is burn it. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Now another thing is to do is when um, you're growing uh, you're growing them in seedlings is to don't crowd the seedlings all in one pot you want to transport transplant them into their own pot once they get their own true leaves so they can be able to grow strongly and have space to branch out and that's really important and then once you do get to actually planting your tomatoes you want to um, bury your tomato plants deeper than they were in the pot because uh, tomatoes all through the stem they will give out roots so you want to bury them to the first set of leaves and do I this won't create rot they'll just put more roots and more roots equals more fruit and it's also going to make the tomato plant a healthier and stronger thing tomatoes they really like a lot of light so you need to find a light place with at least 10 hours of natural sunlight a day for the best results. Now lots of people are saying 14 to 16 hours, yes that is good, but then they're saying you need fake lighting and that's just a waste of energy. You need to sort of, when organic gardening, you need to take advantage of what you have and uh, try and be as self-sufficient as possible. So put them in a nice space um, allowing good airflow for air to circulate to allow the stems to breathe and you will be able to do companion planting with them but just make sure that there's enough air for the fruit to stop the build up of fungus. Now suckers I've done a whole video on them and basically lots of people say that they don't bear fruit which is true I haven't found them bear bear to bear fruit but lots of people say they do so obviously uh, everyone has a different opinion and whatever your opinion is um, you can go along with it but mine is uh, tomato suckers are just a waste of space and I've done it I'll tell you once and I'll tell you a mil million times but this is really what I think and you don't want especially when you you have tomatoes growing now you want all the energy into actually making these ripe and carrying on with the flowers this is just going to waste energy and as we have less of a growing season we're just going to pinch out all tomato suckers and these though will create new plants so just uh, get an aeroponics kit or stick them in some compost up to there uh, you can scrape it along like that and there's a simple tomato cutting make sure you keep the growing medium moist and uh, roots will grow out and this will become a whole new tomato plant Having a good support system is vital for tomato plants because it's going to give them that extra support so if it does get windy and you're growing them outside you're going to have extra support for them to grow in. Now you can use all sorts of things, either grow them up a trellis because tomato plants are a vine, you can also stake them in. Now if you do choose to stake them I would do it as soon as you transplant uh, the seedlings into the ground so that's going to avoid damaging the roots. Now my favourite method and it's the one that my dad uses all the time is to use some string and then you thread it through. It's like um, weaving it uh, through the plant like this and carry on weaving it through so it's holding it 
around and around like a staircase. Think of it as a staircase in this castle, around and around. And then you're going to go up and attach it to a bit of string that runs along the cross of the greenhouse. If you don't have this, you can build a very simple, um, uh, like, you can build a very simple su support system with a bit of wood, so that's definitely something you should look into doing. Encourage new growth by feeding them with organic feed like diluted liquid manure or nettle juice once the first fruit are ripening to give them a helping hand in the ripening process by giving them important nutrients and minerals that they need that helps them out. Also what you can do is to just add a layer of compost and water it in and that will do the same job. But liquid manure is what I think is the best thing for doing this to encourage these fruit to ripen up quicker and help get flowers uh, to turn into fruit and grow fruit really nice and healthily. Now I can't harvest any fruit at the moment because they haven't turned the correct colour but do harvest them once they have and do not leave them on because they can overripe quite quickly. If you do find yourself having them uh, ripen too quickly. Harvest them just as the first bit of colour is changing. You can even harvest them green and they will uh, turn colour. But eating them at their prime ripeness is the best time to get all the nutrients into you. So that's one, one of the things. And another tip which I found is quite clever is to plant half your seeds after three to four weeks of the first batch so you get a longer lasting supply of fruit so you get first fruit your m first starts of fruit three to four weeks before you get a second batch of t fruit off your tomato plants and that's a really good thing to get a longer harvesting time I was just thinking what would be good as the last tip so then I suddenly thought about companion planting and companion planting is basically when you plant plants close nearby or in between the plant to help give them beneficial needs either by deterring pests or to help them grow stronger so I've just got four things here that's going to four different types of plants that's going to help you grow uh, healthier fruits and work together to grow well. So the first thing is to plant the onion family close to help deter many insect pests so either garlic, onions, um, anything like that and that's help going to deter pests that are on the tomato plants and borage helps deter tomato horn worm, horn worm Nasturtiums help deter white fly and aphids, which I just only found out um, about an hour ago. But I think that's such a good thing and should definitely be put in place. And these are nasturtiums here, with a bee busy pollinating them. So well done, bumblebee. It's good to see that there are some more still around, even though lots of them are being killed off at the moment. And finally. Uh, growing basil and tomatoes together helps increase the flavour of both crops which is very interesting. So I hope you enjoyed this top 10 video and I don't think it's been too long but I am going away on holiday so I will be scheduling some videos uh, very soon and so that's maybe why I won't re be replying to them. But thank you very much for listening and I'll see you again. Now remember there is going to be a whole week of cooking and that's the 19th to 25th I think. So stay tuned for that and see you again. Goodbye.